electronic devices. If you are joining us from home, a worship aid was sent to you via flock notes for this morning's Mass. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. John, Apostle and Evangelist. Our gathering song is number 437, Joy to the World, 437. Please stand and join in singing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today, as we heard in the introduction, we are celebrating the feast of uh, Apostle and Evangelist St. John. He is called the beloved disciple and we all have the need and desire to be loved. Beloved means to be loved. And for all those moments where we have not allowed God to truly love us and be close to him, maybe because of our personal sins and areas of our life that we haven't opened for God to enter into our lives, let us now acknowledge those dark areas of our life and ask him to cleanse us and purify us to make us worthy for this celebration. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you.
Let us pray. O oh God, who through the blessed apostle John have unlocked for us the secrets of your word, grant we pray that we may grasp with proper understanding what he has so marvelously brought to our ears. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the first letter of St. John. Beloved, what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we looked upon and touched with our hands, concerns the word of life. For the life was made visible. We have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was made visible to us. What we have heard, seen and heard, we proclaim now to you so that you too may have fellowship with us. For our fellowship is with the Father and with the, his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing this so that our joy may be complete. The word of the Lord. to his home. 
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we do not know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial clothes there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial clothes there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial clothes, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and saw and believed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A story said about the dog of a village pastor. The pastor in the village had a dog, and one night the dog began to bark very loud and very vigorous. And hearing the barking of the pastor's dog, the other dogs in the village the parish nation, the people who had other dogs, they also began to bark. So for a while, there was a big, loud noise of dogs barking everywhere. And one by one, the other dogs began to get tired and they began to stop. While the pastor's dog still continued to bark because the pastor's dog had a reason to bark or begin to bark because it had seen a cat nearby and it was provoked by the presence of the cat while the other dogs, they got tired after a while because they hadn't seen anything. They had only heard the other dog bark. Today, John, the evangelist and the apostle says that he has seen, he has heard, he had touched and he believed and it is his the result of his personal encounter and experience with the Lord that he's proclaiming the first reading that heard, we heard from the beginning of the letter of uh, John, he says, what we have seen, what we have heard, what we have touched, I proclaim to you. On the feast of St. John, the apostle, as well as the evangelist, our attention is called to one who really proclaimed God during a long lifespan that God granted him, unlike the other, the, the other apostles who were martyred during their uh, early stages of life, John is the only apostle who, was, who is not a martyr who had a natural death. It is said by the testimony of uh, Jerome in the Saint Jerome, uh, in the third century or the beginning of the fourth century, he, say, he says about St. John, the evangelist and the apostle, that uh, he was exiled to the island of Patmos. There, of course, he had to undergo persecution. He was imprisoned. But in that island where he lived for over a long period of time, maybe close to 100 years of uh, age, when the elders of the village used to bring him in the midst of the, 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 the public to the, the believers, John would just repeat one verse because he had already grown very old, he couldn't see. The only thing he would repeat, my little children love one another. This was the only thing he repeated in those days. John himself, qualifies or defines as the beloved disciple in the gospel. 
Beloved, of course, we know to be loved, to be uh, held in high esteem or regard. John, as the chosen of the Lord, of course, he's the brother of uh, St. James the Greater, as we, we know, they were, they were both the sons of Zebedee, whom Jesus called. But he grew up to be the beloved of the Lord. As it is narrated by his own gospel, he was the one who was reclining on the breast of, or the chest of Jesus at the Last Supper. And it was to him, the other apostles just said to ask the Lord, who is it that would betray him? Of course, they felt that uh, he had that kind of closeness to the Lord. Now, this tradition of uh, being the beloved of the master, it is also our own task. And it is also our own task to get to know the Lord personally and intimately so that our testimony and our bearing witness to the Lord be authentic and lasting, lasting throughout our life just like John himself testifies. And in the gospel today, we hear about the account where Mary Magdalene, after visiting the tomb early in the morning, found the tomb empty and she ran and communicated the news to Peter and the other disciples. Of course, we know from the tradition, the other disciple about whom John mentions is he himself. And they both, uh, as soon as they heard the news, they ran. And it is said that uh, John being maybe younger in age, he outran Peter and he reached the tomb first. But he didn't go in because he wanted, of course, show uh, the, the importance and uh, the primacy of Peter as the head of the apostles. And he waited for Peter. And after Peter entered the tomb, John too enters. And of course, after having seen the empty tomb, uh, the wrapped clothes of uh, the body of Jesus kept, of course, the towel that covered his head was kept separate, and the, the other clothes also bundled and kept separately. John testifies in detail what they saw in the empty tomb. And after that, John narrates that uh, what we testify to what we have seen and what we have believed. My brothers and sisters, every day we also truly presence and witness the Lord once again taking concrete form of a living person in the, in the, in the mystery of the Eucharist. We receive him, his living body and blood. Are we growing as truly the beloved disciples of the Lord by having a personal intimacy with him? Or are we people who, like the dogs about I spoke in the village, they heard the barking of uh, the pastor's dog, but after a while they got tired because they had had a personal experience or they didn't have a reason to continue to bark. Let our following of the Lord be truly made stem from a personal encounter with the Lord, like uh, the beloved disciple. And maybe we people who can truly transmit and radiate uh, that living witness of uh, having encountered lo the Lord. Today, more than ever, the world needs that kind of a testimony for people to continue to believe and come closer to the Lord. And may our lives be truly a reflection of uh, having encountered the Lord personally and may it also be a personal testimony of our experience of him. May God be praised. Amen. With hopeful hearts, 
Let us lift our praise to our Heavenly Father. That the Holy Spirit may guide all members of the church to continue to grow in holiness and in faith, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders work to build trust between nations based on our shared future and common humanity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the glory of the Lord may be revealed to bring joy to all peoples this Christmas season, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the love of Jesus may offer hope and bring joy to those who are grieving the loss of a loved one during this Christmas season, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may guide this assembly in the ways of charity and hospitality, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those for whom we've promised to pray and for the prayers we hold in the depths of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may welcome Joseph and Estelle Notini and Stanley Kolniak and all the souls of the faithful departed to rejoice in eternal fellowship with the Father and the Son, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of heaven and earth, we rejoice in you. Please hear our prayers and grant them according to your holy will through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, to will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands to will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be, and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with a humble and contrite heart. Wash away our iniquities, Lord, and cleanse us from all our sins. Amen. Thank you. Pray, my friends, that this our sacrifice and our praise be acceptable and pleasing to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of the Let us pray. Sanctify the offerings we have made, O Lord, we pray, and grant that from the banquet of this supper we may draw the hidden wisdom of the eternal word, just as from the same source you revealed it to your apostle John, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and promise your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, 
to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and, and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Archbishop, Etlo, our Oxley Bishop, with all other bishops, with the priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. Saint John, and with all the apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
May the peace of the newborn child, Jesus, be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. As we come forth to receive the body of Christ, let us join in singing number 916, I Receive the Living God, 916.
let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that the word made flesh, proclaimed by the blessed apostle John, may through this mystery which we have celebrated ever dwell among us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's together pray for the vocations. O loving and gracious God, Father of all, you bless your people in every time and season and provide for their needs through your providential care. Your church is continually in need of priests, deacons, sisters, and brothers to offer themselves in the service of the gospel by lives of dedicated love. Open the hearts of your sons and daughters to listen to your call in their lives. Give them the gift of understanding to discern your invitation to serve you and your church. Give them the gift of courage to follow your call. May they have the spirit of young Samuel, who found fulfillment in his life. And he said to you, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. He asked this through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Thanks be to God. Happy Feast of St. John, the Apostle and Evangelist, and have a wonderful day. Amen.